Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a very special video because it's a first on my channel and it's the first time that I've ever been tagged by anybody and this tag video is brought to you by Zhao from uh, Scented Moments. He tagged me and it's an honor. Uh, I love your channel, Zhao. Love the um, uh, music in the background, the calming voice, you know, the way you just talk about your love of fragrances. Um, very blessed to be tagged. I haven't seen a tag video in years, so I was like, is this still a thing? Apparently it is, So, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to take it seriously. It's five fragrances that I love and five fragrances that I hate. Now, uh, this is a video on my channel, so a couple disclaimers if there's any new people watching this channel that have never watched before. Number one, I love vintage. Uh, I also love niche and, you know, designer, and I go all over the place, but I love discontinued vintage fragrances that are a little hard to find. Some of these are discontinued. Some of them are hard to find. Some of them are moderately difficult to find, but they're out there. If you put in a little bit of work, you can find them. And, um, you know, I am known for longer video formats, and this video will probably be uh, longer than Rich Mitch did one and Zhao did one, and now I'm doing one because I am including an unboxing in this. Uh, I can't have a box come in and not open it. Uh, there is a uh, fellow on my channel, and I don't want to butcher his name, but I think it's something like uh, Schlonghammer or something like that is his username. He's a good chap. I've purchased from him a couple times. You'll see him in the comments occasionally. And uh, he has some fragrances that uh, Jonathan and I have been kind of, you know, he's been selling off some of his collection and some of he gives us a very fair price. He doesn't take advantage of us. And so I want to go through this unboxing. But before I do the actual unboxing, you know, very uh, exciting stuff, I want to do Scent of the Day because we always do scent of the day on my channel and so I can't do an entire uh, video without doing my scent of the day uh, and it's a good one too it's a uh, the reason I picked this scent of the day is because I believe this was actually a Zhao uh, recommendation from a year or two ago he did a video on it and so I bought a decant and this is probably the second or third time I've given it a full wear and I like it. It's called uh, St. Dupont, and it's called Perfect Tobacco Eau de Parfum. This came out in 2019, and believe it or not, it's a Julian Rascanet creation. And Julian Rascanet is now famous for creations like Rare Fidelis by um, Histoire de Parfum. He's also famous for Royal Oud by Creed. Creed finally gave him credit for Royal Oud, um, so excited for that. And um, he also did The Moon by Frederick Mall. So he does these fragrances that have this oud take. You can tell he's kind of a specialist in this Middle Eastern style. And if you know me, you know I don't like sweet fragrances. This is a sweet fragrance I actually like because Julian Rascanet does not make bad perfumes, period. It just doesn't happen. You know, his style is such that I don't think it's possible for him to make a bad fragrance. This honestly should be have been called Perfect Oud. Because even though it's not a perfect oud, you know, Russian Adam, uh, I don't want to pull it out because I have some problems with the bottle that need to be fixed, but go watch my unboxing from yesterday of Russian oud. Uh, that's a perfect oud. Or, you know, something like oud zen from Russian Adam, Ariz Lodori, that's a perfect oud. Bortnikov's oud maximus, that's a perfect oud. This is a designer oud, but... For a designer oud, and understand it's oud first, if you buy this with the expectation of a tobacco, you're going to be disappointed because it's basically a rose oud, okay? But it's done in a Julian Rascanet style, which, you know, people pay big money for his fragrances. They pay $800 for a bottle of the moon, you know? And so I'm going to turn this light on because it seems like it's a little dark in here, although it might not do much good, but I'm going to try. Hopefully that helps. Um, so it's a rose oud composition that uses cinnamon and ginger with rose and tobacco. Tobacco's in the background though, okay? It's rose and oud and vanilla is basically what it is. And even though this is a designer oud, there's probably no real oud in this. I think this retails for like 90 or 100 mils for $90 or something retail. Um, it's a good value for money if you're looking for a starter oud. If you're already into the Bortnikoffs, the a Riz Ladores, you're not going to like this. You know, this is the, this is a starter oud, designer starter oud. 
But if you want kind of a guilty pleasure, something sweet that's done well, which usually I hate sweet fragrances, this is one to check out. So Zhao gave this recommendation a year or two ago, and I'm glad I got to experience. I'll, I'll talk about it on my channel before this decant is gone. But uh, ST DuPont Perfect Tobacco is my scent of the day. All right, let's do the unboxing, shall we? Let's see what's in this bad boy. Um, there's actually a bunch of fragrances in here. Oh no, we're gonna have to open these. All right, let's do it. Let's just start tearing into this. Um, if you guys watch my channel, you know this is par for the course, but for the people new watching this from the tag video, they're probably like, oh my God, what a tangent he's going on. Okay, so the first one is going to be Caesar's Man Legendary Cologne Spray. Now, um, Here's the thing about this fragrance. This fragrance is, uh, it used to be a cheapie. It still is if you get the original or, or the version that's currently being sold. It's in a similar vein as an 80s fragrance like Dracar Noir, which Rich Mitch actually put on a list of his fragrances that he hates, believe it or not. I love vintage uh, Dracar Noir in the Cosmere version. Um, this, Caesar's Man, Legendary Cologne Spray is the vintage. The vintage bottles used to say Legendary Cologne Spray. The new ones just say uh, Cologne Spray, I believe. Let's take a quick peek here. Caesar's Man Cologne. Yeah, I think the new ones just say um, Cologne Spray, basically. But it's a rosemary, vervain, lavender, geranium, oak moss, patchouli, sandalwood, amber, uh, fragrance, very 80s, very spicy and green and masculine. And you can see the detail that they used to do on the vintage caps with the, the head on the top and inside of the, of the cap. Um, so yes, I'm excited to kind of tap into this and kind of break it down. I think, uh, Fragrance Matt did a comparison between the vintage and the new juice. And he did say the new juice is kind of lacking. So I'm glad to have a vintage bottle of that. More so to talk about it on my channel than anything else. And then we have a Aramis fragrance. One of the few Aramis for men fragrances I do not, I did not own. And this one's called New West. Now New West came out in the mid to late 80s. Um, this is obviously the, you know, reformulated uh, gentleman's collection. Aramis, uh, Estee Lauder put these uh, fragrances like Tuscany Per Uomo, Aramis 900, JHL in this bottle. Okay, that looks like this. They all look like this now. And they, um, I believe they discontinued the entire line, which is shocking. Um, and the only one they kept is the original Aramis from 64, I believe. And so at the price he sold this to me, I just couldn't say no, even though it's not my favorite type of fragrance because it has this um, somewhat aquatic, somewhat fresh late 80s. You have to remember that it was competing with the likes of um, Cool Water. So Pierre Bourdon's huge hit for Davidoff um, came out in uh, 87, one year before. This is 88. And so it is fresh, it is spicy, it has this... Um, marine touch going through it. I've smelled it before, but I've never really had a, a, a chance to give it full wears and stuff. The vintage bottle, I think, is blue. It's like completely blue. And the weirdest thing about this fragrance to me is they don't list it as an eau de toilette or an eau de parfum. They list it as a skin scent. Look, it says it right there. Skin scent. That is the strangest... Um, concentration I've ever seen in my life. In my life. Uh, Yves Tangai is the perfumer I never heard of before, but someone said, look, as a vintage lover, even if you get the modern bottle, you have to have this. It was the smell of the 80s. And there is more going on than just that calone, watermelon, marine thing. There's also some pine and oak moss and leather. And so it's still tried to stay a little masculine, but freshen it up. Not my favorite genre, to be honest, but um, I'm excited to have it so I can talk about it on the channel for you guys. And then we have a couple other little gems here. Let's open these bad boys up, shall we? 
Little gem number one is a fragrance called Roomba by the house of Ted Lapidus. Now, this fragrance has a story. The story is that uh, it was originally a fragrance for Balenciaga. And if you take a look at the top of the cap, see the way that it has that Ted Lapidus symbol all over it? Look at my vintage bottle of um, Le Dis by Balenciaga. Look at the top of the cap. Whoops, hang on. Let me take the cap off. Look at the top of the bottle. See the design? Beautiful design of the Balenciaga bees. You can see it on the top of the Ted Lapidus uh, bottle here. They're sister, they're brother and sister companies is basically what they are. Uh, and so this is a fragrance that completely took me by storm. By the way, Ladis, this is a fragrance from the 40s for women that absolutely put me on my ass. You want to be knocked off of your chair and you're a guy? Uh, smell this. I, this is one of my favorite aldehydic florals ever. I like this better than Chanel number no. 5. Um, so Roomba by Ted Lapidus is supposedly this skanky, animalic floral fragrance, dirty, you know, lots of civet and stuff like that. And, um, and uh, it's supposed to be kind of in the same ballpark as something like um, Tenere by Paco Rabanne, which I absolutely love. I have two bottles that easily could have been on this list. Um, and so I said, you know what, for the price, even though this is technically the new version, um, I just couldn't say no. This way I can at least, even if it's only a shadow of its former self, at least I can talk about Roomba because it's supposed to have this, um, it came out in 89 for Balenciaga and then in, um, I believe uh, within the last decade, it went to the house of Ted Lapidus and they, you know, they discontinued the Balenciaga one and they kept the Ted Lapidus Roomba, and so there was some sort of a reformulation for whatever it's worth, but um, it still has that heavy animalic, floral, musky, you know, oak moss and plum and, you know, those kind of uh, fruity floral. By the way, the perfumers are Ron Winograd, who I bought his book recently. Uh, I'll talk about the book more on the channel. Uh, a subscriber told me to buy it. And I talked about how much I love his perfumes. I did a perfumer's portfolio on him and Jean-Claude Elena. So any of, any of you Hermes fans who want to get some of Jean-Claude Elena's work before he became Jean-Claude Elena, check out Roomba. Um, this is almost like a little historical piece of art for me. Um, you know, very, the plum and the tuberose will give you kind of that Dior Poison vibe from the 80s, but... Uh, this is 80s in a bottle. And then, a fragrance that I used to have. This is my second bottle. I actually ran through an entire bottle. Now, granted, it was like a 20... It was like a 25 mil bottle, I think, if I remember. So it was a small one. But still, this is my second bottle. Um, and this is called Capucci Porom. And this is my second or third fragrance from the house because I have a fragrance called Art de Capucci from the 80s. And Capucci Por Homme uh, is, again, not my favorite type of fragrance because it's an old school chiffre with um, loads of citruses. And so Capucci Por Homme has this extremely, um, extremely fresh, citrus. You know how they used to make fragrances in the 50s and 60s for men with just loads of citruses. Eau Sauvage comes to mind. Um, you know, there's a ton of uh, bergamot, lime, and lemon in the top of this. Uh, but it is a, it is technically a old school uh, chiffre, kind of like uh, the original Chanel Pour Monsieur from the mid 50s. And so I'm happy to have a bottle of our, I'm sorry, Capucci Porum. I already have bottles of our de Capucci. This is, uh, there's the old school Capucci logo and you can tell it's vintage by the way they put the batch code on the bottom. I love that from the old days. Uh, and it has the 85% volume. So this is an old bottle, but it looks very well taken care of. Sorry for the glare. Um, anyways, Capucci Porum. So that's my little haul. Um, thank you very much for, you know, 
the haul, my friend. I very much appreciate it. You guys will be hearing about these on my channel very soon. So let's do what we tuned in to do, which is five fragrances I love and five fragrances I hate. Uh, and um, I'm going to preface this by saying one thing that if you really want to get a breakdown of my order and how I would place things one versus the other in my mind, because there's so many fragrances I love. I'm a fragrance lover, okay? Uh, I think this is one of the finest hobbies that a man or a woman can have. Um, and, you know, I think it is um, something that stimulates thought and feeling and all this stuff, right? So go watch my top 100 countdown. I literally did a top 100 of my favorite fragrances ranked. So I could have just said pick my top five, but I didn't want to do that because I figured people could go watch it and see my top five for themselves. Um, so I wanted to get a little bit creative. So these are fragrances that I like. Uh, and Zhao picked Dior Homme Parfum. I'm going to pick a Dior Homme as well, but my favorite of the line is not the Parfum, although I do like the Parfum. Um, I think that's a good fragrance, but my favorite is Dior Homme, the original Silver Stem from 2005. So Dior Homme uh, was originally released, not by Francois de Machy, but it was originally released by a gentleman called Olivier Poles, who of course went on to be in-house perfumer of Chanel, and is the son of the great Jacques Poles, who of course made the famous Antaeus for Chanel and all those, you know, you could go on and on about Jacques Poles' career, Egoist, all the fantastic things he did. Um, Dior Homme 2005 to me, the silver stem version is my favorite version because it smells like a Chanel. You know, it has these details that Demashi's reformulated versions do not have. And the way you can tell it's the silver stem, um, breaking news, is it literally has a silver stem instead of a black stem inside. And these silver stem bottles ran from about 2005 until I think 2008. And then they got reformulated and they were no longer the silver stem. The early, early bottles of uh, Dior Om. Uh, from about 2005 and 2006, I think only the first two years actually had the Dior logo on the stem itself. So if you look inside, you see it's Dior is imprinted on the silver stem. Um, you don't have to get that nerdy about it. You can just try to find a bottle of the silver stem. Rich Mitch said he just found a bottle. So he sold his Dior own Parfum and he used that money to buy a silver stem of Dior Homme, the EDT. Like I, like me and him both think this is the the best version of Dior Homme. And I love Dior Homme Parfum, but from a technical standpoint, from a creation standpoint, from a bravery standpoint of a of a release, and from a standpoint of you know legendary status and affecting all of the other fragrance houses you know around them and what was released at that time. You know, this was an absolute monster. This was a um, game changer, if you will, because many people laughed when they when they heard Dior was going to do an iris fragrance. I mean, they almost literally laughed. Iris for men? Are you insane? This has this, um, obviously, the makeup-y iris everyone talks about. There's no other way to describe it. But it also has masculine notes like lavender and sage, and it has little gourmand touches with the cacao. Uh, there is leather in the base, but it's not as turned up as in Dior Own Parfum. And uh, there's touches of uh, Tahitian vetiver and patchouli and some cardamom for spices. And this for me is a year-round fragrance. I would wear this in the 100 degree heat in Texas. I would wear this in the dead of winter, although normally I'd wear Intense or the Parfum in the dead of winter. But this is a all year round fragrance for me. I think it's totally classy, you know, totally, um, it's like this, like I'm dressed today for work. You know, I just got off work, came home to do this video. This is what Dior Homme reminds me of. It reminds me of someone who is dressed to the nines, um, you know, ready to, uh, to not just face the day, but attack the day. You know, someone that's... Um, it reminds me of a man that is well groomed, well put together, and you know, and and he is prepared for whatever the day is gonna uh, gonna go his way. So Dior own very classy, you know. It it that's why I say it reminds me of a Chanel. Chanel has that class, 
even when they do animalic fragrances like Antaeus or um, even when they do Queer de Russie that has some dirtiness to it, it just has this class. And this Dior has this Chanel class. I literally wonder if this was meant to be a Chanel and uh, Olivier Polge used it for uh, Dior before Demashi became the in-house perfumer. Just absolutely stunning stuff. And that's, so Dior Ohm Silver Stem is the first one. Again, long discontinued, hard to find, but bottles too, do pop up from, from um, time to time. One of my favorite iris fragrances of all time. Okay, from one discontinued to another discontinued fragrance. Uh, unfortunately, the first three are going to be discontinued. But again, you're on my channel, so what do you expect? Um, this is a fragrance called Joint Pour Homme by the house of Rocco Barocco. Yes, that's right. How many O's and how many C's? Rocco Barocco. Uh, and so this is the box, which I usually don't have handy, but uh, this one I actually do have. And this is a 50 mil bottle. You can see kind of the detailing inside of the box. Uh, Rocco Barocco, the reason I chose this is that I think this is heavily underappreciated. Even though Sebastian at um, the Perfume Guy channel put this as his number one, oh God, uh, vintage masculine that he loves the most, I still think usually that would cause people to run out and buy it because Sebastian has a huge amount of pull. Um, but with this, it didn't. Prices didn't even budge. It's like people just went, yeah, right, Rocco Barocco joint. You know, like they didn't take him seriously. Sebastian knows what he's talking about. He's been in perfume for, you know, half of his life or whatever it is. And uh, this is a 50 mil bottle. By the way, this is the Hescanas distributor. Hescanas. I also have a 100 mil, so you can see the size difference, but the writing has completely rubbed off. So I have a, I have a backup. Um, the 100 mil is not Hescana's, it's P, it's Parfums P2. These are the two different distributors. I think the Hescana's was the, um, latest version before it got discontinued. I think this one was first, but I'm not really sure. Um, I honestly don't know which, which one, um, came first, but my point in showing you both is that A, I love it enough to have a backup bottle. And B, both versions are good. Don't spend extra money because someone says this version is better or this one's better. No, these are fantastic. They're both absolutely amazing. So what does it smell like? So Joint, oh my God. Joint by Rocco Barocco came out in 1993, but it feels like it was a fragrance that was released in 1983. It feels like it was a fragrance from a decade ago, okay? Well, not a decade ago today in 2022, but a decade ago from 1993. It has this, um, it has this early 80s animalic, um, if you know the honey from Hugo Boss number one, which easily could have been on this list. And if you go watch my top 100, Hugo Boss number one from 85 is in the top 10. I'll tell you that right now. It's my favorite honey fragrance of all time. Um, this has that honey tobacco combo that's in Hugo Boss number five, number one, uh, but it has this uh, dirty civet that's in Coro. So you get a little bit of Hugo Boss, you get a little bit of Coro's, two of my favorite fragrances of all time, two in the top 10 in my top 100, by the way. And But on top of that, what they've done, what makes this fragrance so interesting and unique to me is yes, it's animalic. Yes, it's dirty. Yes, you have to like old school fragrances. Um, but they've added this green top. Okay. So when you spray, you kind of can sense some of the animalics underneath the tobacco, the honey, the spiciness of cardamom, the smoothness of orris. But the top, you get this all these green notes coming at you, and you're like, what is this? You get mugwort, you get basil, you get coriander, um, you get some little bit of citruses, um, but that greenness just adds this amazing contrast to a fragrance that, again, feels like it's a decade late to the party. Like Rocco Barocco didn't even care this was already out of style. People were wearing cool water for, you know, seven, five, seven years by the time this came out, um, th and they didn't even care. They just put this out and said, screw it, we're doing our own thing. And I really appreciate a house that does this. Sorry to 
show you the bottle that doesn't have the name on it. That's the one that the writing hasn't rubbed out. It, it's called Joint Pour Homme by Rocco Barocco. And the thing about this fragrance too, what makes this fragrance um, one to really highlight is if you are a vintage fragrance lover and hunter like I am, you will know that some fragrances have reached unicorn status. If you go try to buy yourself a bottle of Patou Pour Homme or Gucci Nobile, which all could have been on this list, um, you know, you're going to find that you're going to put a big dent in your pocket. Big dent. They may go for $800, $1,000, $1,500, er, insane prices. This one, for whatever reason, has not been jacked up yet. It will be soon, I'm telling you, but it has not been jacked up yet. It's still somewhat expensive, but it's doable. You know, I've seen bottles floating around for uh, $50 to $100, which is a steal for this quality of juice to me. This level of, um, you know, vintage masculine juice. Rocco Barocco Joint Pour Homme. Okay, next we're going to do a, a woman's fragrance. I had to put a woman's perfume in here. And um, if, if you've been following my channel, this will come as no surprise to you. Uh, if you have not and you're new, I would urge you to check this out. It's a fragrance from the house of Crizia, and it's called Tietro alla Scala. Now, uh, I did a first impression on this video and on this video, sorry, on this fragrance. And I did a comparison between the Eau de Toilette, which is what this is, and the Eau de Parfum. So I have two videos on this. If you search my channel for Tietro alla Scala Crizia, you will find, go watch my first impression first. It will give you a laugh because I literally almost fell out of my chair when I smelled this for the first time. It's an animalic chifra, okay? Um, but the likes of which you've never smelled. It has the most absolutely amazing uh, mixture of notes. Um, it is aldehydic. It has that beeswax honey accord that I love so much. I talked about Boss Number no. One. I talked about Rocco Barocco Joint Pour Homme. Um, and it does use some civet, but it's used in a classic, think about classic feminine chifras of the past. So, you know, if you love old school chifras, name, name your favorites, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Pick, pick, pick whichever one you like. The ones that are probably closest to this uh, would be something like Chanel's Coco, which Jacques Paul has created. Uh, you could also try and find something like, um, this is a fragrance from the house of uh, Ungaro called Diva, which is discontinued, by the way. Diva came out a year before Coco and is also a Jacques Paul. It's, it's in that ballpark, you know. There's also a fragrance by the house of Paco Rabanne called La Nuit. Not La Nuit de Lome, that's the man's version, La Nuit, which came out in the 80s. It's a woman's version. It's also in this ballpark. Um, but this is the one that I love the most because this is the one I discovered first, the one that just set me off on this course of hunting those others I talked about down. Uh, it's just amazing. The florals, the orris, the carnation, geranium, rose, tuberose, jasmine, ylang. I walked into an auto shop filled with guys wearing cowboy hats and boots. It was raining, pouring. I walked in wearing this. I swear to God, everyone stopped. And they, every single person must have stopped and just looked at me. Uh, it has that pull, you know, like what... People are not used to smelling this today. This is literally the fat lady standing on the stage singing at an 11 pitch. You know, this is at the top of her lungs, windows shattering, um, but just the most beautiful voice you've ever heard, that's Teatro Alla Scala. It is stunning in all components. I don't know who the perfumer is, but whoever it is created an absolute masterpiece that was lost to the dustbins of history. And I have a subscriber who just wrote me yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. He said, hey bro, Obviously, he looked like a big guy in his in his picture or whatever, in his uh, uh, YouTube picture. He said, hey, bro, I thought you were pulling my leg on Teatro Alla Scala. And so I was hesitant, but I just trusted your nose and I bought a sample or I bought a bottle. And he said, you're exactly right. It might be the most amazing fragrance I've ever smelled. That's what the, the comment said. You'll probably find it from a few videos back if you go look. Uh, and he said, I thought you were pulling my leg. I thought you were kidding. And I said, I would never kid about something as important as perfume. 
Um, Teatro Alla Scala, forget about the fact it's marketed towards women. This is just a stone cold stunner of a fragrance. And, you know, the price has probably doubled or maybe even tripled from my first impressions video. Um, there were tons of bottles floating around at 30, 40 bucks. Now they're 80 to 100, maybe 120. Um, women's fragrances are starting to rise just like men's fragrances are, the vintage ones. So if you're interested in some of these, I think now is the time to act. Again, I get nothing for hyping this up, absolutely nothing. In fact, I hurt myself because I wanted to buy more bottles of this. And once I talked about how good it was, all the people who watched my videos ran out and bought it. So I couldn't buy another bo a backup bottle in this style. They were gone. Uh, but Anuj from Enchante found me some of the Eau de Parfum, so I'm happy. But um, either way, check that one out. And then I did an interview with Liz Moores of Papillon. If you haven't watched that video, go watch it. It's probably one of the best things I've ever put on my channel. She is an absolute darling, dear. Uh, she is a um, very creative mind. I love the way her mind ticks because... She likes to go against the grain. She likes to do her own thing. And I very much appreciate that. Um, that means a lot to me. And I think her brand is one of the best value for monies you can buy on the, in the niche world because she doesn't jack her concentration up to extra so she can double or triple the price like some brands here. Um, you know, this is the one I'm going to talk about, the one that I fell in love with again. Uh, I've had this fragrance for years. Probably three or four years, three or four years if I had to guess. Uh, but I re fell in love with it again, wearing it um, during her interview. I wore it the day before her interview to remind myself of it. And uh, I, it was in, it was hot in Texas. It was 103 degrees or something. The jasmine came out heavier. It just felt so much more alive, and it's usually alive even in the cold. But, I mean, I think this might have even jumped to my most favorite fragrance from the house, which says something, because Salome is usually my favorite. But the one I'm going to highlight is called Anubis. A-N-U-B-I-S. And whenever you wear this, look at the color of the juice. Whenever you wear this, it almost feels like when you spray it on your skin, it feels like you're wearing an extra, like you're wearing a pure parfum. Um, and... Um, it's, she mentioned it's like right there on the cutoff, okay? So it is uh, Eau de Parfum, but if it was just a little bit heavier, it would be an extra. It would be a pure parfum. But she's selling it as if it's an Eau de Parfum for 205 bucks or whatever it is. What an amazing bang for your buck this is. And if you've never smelled Anubis, there is literally nothing like it. That's the thing. Is I love... Um, I love her other fragrance, which is Salome. This is not the one I'm highlighting in the list, but I'm just showing you because with Salome, it reminds me a little bit of um, Bala Versailles Parfum. It reminds me a little bit of Diaghilev, wherever it is. Uh, there are some comparisons. There's nothing like Anubis. It is so unique. It's this leathery, smoky. Uh, there's this Egyptian jasmine note that really came out in the heat. Uh, and this, the, one of the most amazing, you know, if you like that uh, Middle Eastern saffron that houses do to death nowadays, they, they almost make the notes seem cheap. If you want to see how it should properly be done, get yourself a 50 ml bottle of Anubis, wear it for a week or two, and tell me if after that week or two, you're not going to come back and say, this is the most amazing combination of uh, labdanum, saffron, frankincense, and suede you've ever smelled, ever. And don't worry about the white floral Egyptian jasmine note. It just plays a, um, it plays a complementary role. If you don't like white flowers, don't worry about that. This is resinous, dark, leathery, smoky, and even in the heat, it just absolutely worked beautifully. So Anubis is number four on the list. And then we're going to do number five. And I think this is a fragrance that Zhao also has. Um, it's a leather perfume. Leather is my most loved note of all. Uh, and I am I am reading uh, on the um, Parfumo website, okay? 
and it says that this fragrance was apparently discontinued. This is the first time I'm reading it right now, by the way, okay? So I don't know if this is true or not, but Parfumo.net says this is discontinued, which, if true, is an absolute heartbreak. Um, this is called Pure Distance M. And Pure Distance is a niche brand. Uh, the perfumer is listed as Roja Dove, but um, personally, I don't think he's a perfumer. Uh, I think he's more of a creative director, but, you know, to each their own. Some people get super offended at that. They attack and say, how could you talk bad about Roja? Um, and obviously, I like his stuff. Look at all my Rojas. I bought with my own money. He did not send me those. Pure Distance M is a masterpiece of a leather fragrance. It is, um, it's spicy, it's leathery. Uh, you get this beautiful cystus labdanum note, which I know Roja loves working with. And you get this lovely oak moss. And there's hints of jasmine and rose. But it's really all about that leather. If you like fragrances like Bellamy by Hermes, uh, this is a niche version of Bellamy. And I think this is a 60 ml bottle. Yeah, this is a 60 ml, and I think my juice is probably right there. So I probably have like 50 mils left, and I will cherish this if it's discontinued. And, um, you know, you could also maybe put it in something like uh, Accord du Desert or Le du Desert Marocain. Or, you know, it has that resinous, leathery, spiciness going. Because of the labdanum, it will remind you of one another. Uh, but Pure Distance M, oh my god, I mean... If it is discontinued, it's an absolute travesty. It smells like an expensive Italian sports car, like a Maserati. Uh, it is one of my favorite leather fragrances to wear. And, um, you know, if it is discontinued, I will be very disappointed, actually. Very, very disappointed because it was the best from the brand. So, um, those are my five that I love. Now let's do five I hate. As you can see, there's no cuts in my video. We just go full on. So number one that I hate, uh, and you guys may be surprised by this, but it is what it is. This is Mansara Cedrat Boise. And actually, uh, I have a vintage bottle because the new bottles have magnetic caps. And my, my bottle is a twist. So if anyone wants to pay me triple for a, a twist, I'll sell it to you. Um, I, don't, I don't sell my perfumes, but it's this woody, fruity, um, cheap take on Aventus that just screechy, um, you know, laundry, there's these laundry musks that you'll kind of smell. It's just the guy that runs this this brand can't, can't blend, uh, whoever, whatever his name is. Um, I can never think of his name, Pierre Montal, Pierre Montal. He can't blend. Uh, it's this uh, leather, uh, vanilla, black currant, Aventus take basically with the pineapple pretty much removed. They kept the black currant. Uh, they kept the lemon and the, um, you know, vanilla, and they basically tried to make it a little bit of their own, but um, I just, I never connected with this. I thought it smelled cheap, and I would just rather wear Aventus is the problem. I've got like four bottles, four vintage Aventus bottles, and so every time I tried to wear this, it was just like, my body was just like, what are you doing? Why are you wearing this? Why are you not just wearing Aventus? And so many times when I crave this DNA, I would just wear Aventus and not this. I guess the coolest thing about it is that little bag it comes in. Um, but there you have it. Mansara Cedrat Boise is number one. Number two uh, is another fragrance that might surprise some people, but I don't like sweet fragrance. And this is the epitome of sickly designer sweet, okay? This is La Mal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Francis Kirkjohn created this and it put him on the map. He was in his 20s basically when he made this. Uh, this is this um, vanilla lavender combo with some mint and tonka. It's sickly sweet. The lavender smells cheap. I mean, it lasts forever. It'll last 40 hours on your skin or whatever it may be. But if you hate the smell of it, those 40 hours can be like hell. And it's just like piercing headache. You know, when I smell this, I just think of 15-year-old boys at the mall. And I just I just can't do it. I can't. As much as I, I bought this recently, actually, because I wanted to wear it and talk about it on the channel. Because 
you know, it's Lamal. It's one of the iconic fragrances. And I tried to wear it a couple times and every time it just is piercing, even if I spray it on the tester strip. Um, so Lamal is definitely a hate for me. You know, it is currently being marketed by Puig. And this is the vintage BPI bottles or whatever it is, BPI something. Um, again, I don't sell my perfumes, but these are these three full bottles that I'm going to show I, I would consider um, selling. This is probably my most hated of all my all the bottles that I own. Every single one. This is the number one hated fragrance. Uh, and it's from the house of Scent Story. And this is 24 Elixir Rise of the Superb. That is literally the name. I'm not making it up. Uh, 24 Elixir Rise of the Superb. And it came out in 2000 and... Oh, so, God, it just smells so awful, even from the atomizer. So I bought this um, because someone mentioned that this is close to Jubilation 25, which is one of my favorite Emouage fragrances. Here she is right here. Um, and so I was at this point in my journey. I must have bought this four years ago or so, I would guess, three or four years ago. Uh, and I was at this point where I was trying, God, it's so bad. Uh, I was trying uh, cheaper versions, you know, because I found uh, that I liked La Yucawam, and La Yucawam is a Tuscan leather clone. So I said, hey, let me try some of these cheaper uh, alternatives, if you will, right? So 24 Cent Story uh, Elixir, Rise of the Superb, it, I blind bought it because I got such a great deal on it, and it got here. And I sprayed it on and I literally had to wash wash it off. It was the only time in my life I've ever washed a fragrance off. I don't wash fragrances off, okay? I go, I just suck it up. You know, I sprayed it on. Uh, I act like a man. And this one I had to wash off and I just doused myself in Jubilation 25 to try to cover up the smell. It was so bad. Uh, it is, it has this disgusting chili note. You know how I talk about... Um, how much I love the chili note in uh, Fate Woman by Amouage. This is the best chili note I've ever smelled. It's absolutely stunning, right? This oriental opium, this could easily be on the list too. I love Fate Woman. Um, this is the most disgusting chili note you'll ever smell in your life. And the, the power on this is nuclear. I mean, it's thermonuclear. It is... You know, you could smell me from the other side of the country if I put this on. It is absolutely monstrous projection and longevity. And um, when you hate the smell, that's kind of hard to get away from. So, 24 cent story. Okay, the final two are going to be decants. I don't have full bottles, thank God. Uh, the first one's going to be this. This is Polo Red. I absolutely despise Polo Red. Um, first of all, I don't like sweet fragrances. This is a fruity sweet fragrance for men that came out in 2013. And it has this disgusting cranberry note that just makes me sick to my stomach every time I smell it. This sweet cranberry, um, saffron and red woods, whatever the hell red woods are. But um, I don't even want to open it to try to smell it. All I know is I cannot stand this stuff. It's everything I hate. And actually, uh, Polo Green is the one that I absolutely love. This is a love for me. This is what a man should smell like. This is tobacco and pine and all this other beautiful stuff that men should smell like. Tarragon and stuff like that. Polo Red is everything wrong with modern masculine perfumery. It's fruity and sweet. Uh, and synthetic, disgustingly sweet. Uh, so for me, polo green all day, you know. People might say, oh, this is grandpa perfume. Bullshit. This is absolutely uh, what a man should smell like, and this is what, I don't know, a child should smell like? I, I don't know who would wear polo red and enjoy it, but not me. Uh, and then finally, the final fragrance on my hate list is a fragrance from Zerzhov, and Zhao did a Zerzhov too, so we both have one. They're different fragrances, but mine is Symphonium. And I did an early impression video on Symphonium. Go watch my early impression video. I decanted this from Lucky Scent samples. I got like eight of them. 
And so I decanted them in here and wore it as my scent of the day a couple times. Oh my God, this is, oh, it, oh, it is so bad. I cannot believe they're charging $400 a bottle for this. This is a $10 fragrance in a $400 bottle. It has this disgusting orange chocolate and white musk accord. Um, and the orange and chocolate makes it smell like one of those uh, oranges that you, chocolate oranges that you buy and you hit it and it opens up into the little orange pieces. That's what it smells like. This disgustingly sweet, cheap smelling. I can't believe they sell this for $400. It is just mind blowing to me. And then they say there's Thai oud in here. Um, I don't know. If they say there's real oud in here, I'll say there's real oud. It doesn't smell like there's real oud. It smells like there's, it doesn't smell like there's real oud in here. Um, oh, there's, they say there's Laotian and Thai oud. Um, there's bourbon vanilla. It's just, oh, it's just, it literally, um, go watch my early impression video if you want to laugh. I absolutely annihilated this fragrance. Uh, this fragrance got nuked from Orbit is what someone said about my early impression, and it deserves it. I mean, there are some Zerzhoff fragrances that I like. I like Richwood. Um, I like Zerzhoff Om, but this is a joke. And the fact that Zerzhoff puts out, you know, 70 fragrances a year, I mean, the house is just a, they're just a joke. Uh, and this is one of the worst things I've ever smelled. Symphonium is absolutely disgusting. I was honestly offended by it. I almost wanted to write Zerzhoff a letter and say, what in the world are you guys doing? Um, you know, I don't know who, I don't know what fragrance lover would buy that and love it. You know what I mean? Um, it's, 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 it's made for, I, I think it's made for people perusing the high-end malls or the Zerzhoff shops with way too much money in their wallet. Their wallets are way too fat. And, you know, it's, 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 it's like the old saying, common sense ain't so common, uh, because anyone dropping $400 on this, uh, they are completely clueless. And, um, you know, I almost feel sorry for them. So anyways, that's my top five loves, top five hates. You got a bonus unboxing. You got a scent of the day from Julianne Raskine, Perfect Tobacco by St. DuPont. So if you watch this channel because of the tag video, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, Zhao, thank you for tagging me. Uh, to my regulars, I really appreciate the support over all these months and coming up on a year soon this winter. Uh, and, you know, I know we crossed the 1,500 subscriber mark. I didn't even say anything because it doesn't matter to me. But I do appreciate the likes, the comments, the subscriptions, uh, even though I don't come out and ask for it at the opening and have fancy graphics pop up that say like and subscribe and you know I'm, I'm not a real YouTuber in that sense it is something that uh, it is greatly appreciated and you know it definitely gets noticed by me and hopefully the YouTube algorithms are noticing um, every day I'm getting more and more people kind of come on say hey I found your channel and all this stuff and those are the people that I want the ones that organically find me the ones that are really part of the tribe that truly love fragrances. Um, you know, the ones that are looking for the next level of fragrance content. They want to move away from Jeremy fragrance and go to the next level. Um, so anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching. Leave your feedback below. Let me know what you think about the five loves and five hates, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye guys.